Good evening. Tonight we bring you a special report on how your kids are ours now. Ha 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 ha! Because the California Senate has passed a bill that will cause parents to lose custody of a child if the parent does not affirm the child's imaginary gender. That's right! Under the bill, parents who refuse to participate in gender-affirming, hormone therapy, and slicing and dicing of their kids' crotches can be found guilty of failing to provide for the health, safety, and welfare of their child. Therefore, that parent can lose custody of their child to another parent or the state. Governor Gavin Newsom is expected to sign the bill into law shortly. And the bill was introduced by Assembly members Lori Wilson and Scott Weiner, both Democrats. Shocker. As laws targeting parents so that their children can more easily be targeted get more and more aggressively progressive, with this latest one, you as a parent will be deemed abusive if you're not willing to subject your child to abusive mutilations. Makes sense. Elon Musk responded to the bill by tweeting, this bill is a wolf in sheep's clothing. What it actually means is that if you disagree with the other parent about sterilizing your child, you lose custody. Utter madness. Side note, one of Elon's 337 children identifies as trans. This bill has been put forth and supported by politicians who want you to abort your children, ending their lives before they're even born. And given that they want your children dead, you can trust that they have your child's best health, safety, and welfare interests in mind on this one. Now with what we're trying to do here, we can't stress enough how abusive it is for parents to affirm, protect, and love their children based on the reality of who and what they are, rather than basing it on the child's imagination of who and what they want to be. Abuse is saying, I love you for who you are, and you should accept yourself for who you are. But good leftist parenting, on the other hand, is saying, I love you for who you could become if you're castrated and significantly, hormonally, and surgically changed. And you should only accept yourself if you change significantly. But some object to this. Many who have a conscience and a soul would say that trying to find happiness by altering who and what you are is a fool's game. These extremists would also say that happiness is found by accepting yourself as you are. And if that's hard to do, then healing the pain, trauma, and negative beliefs that you carry that cause you to be in a perpetual place of self-rejection where you're seeking to be someone different is the wise thing to do. In other words, they're saying that getting psychological help to make your disturbed psychology better will lead to more success than using physical surgery and hormonal alterations to try to make your psychological disturbances better. The wise people might also say that getting your self-identity from your gender will always disempower you. Because trying to identify with your gender is identifying with something that you're not, which is always disempowering while alternatively identifying with who you actually are is the route of empowerment to true happiness. And who you are is a divine miraculous being that is far greater than your gender or any other physiological aspect of your body. But to these wise people with their dangerous theories, I say this, suck my mutilated the truth is that thinking that you are your gender is what makes you happy, and thinking that you're the wrong gender will make you even happier. And going through irreversible permanent surgical changes and castrations before your brain is fully formed is the best way to heal any discomfort, anxiety, depression, or unhappiness that you have. It's like if the Wi-Fi in your home isn't working, then the best way to fix it is to remodel your kitchen. Trust the science. And parents in California, you better be trusting the science or else you could lose your children. And as this recent bill requires parents who don't want to lose their children to ignore objective biological reality in favor of affirming their child's imagination, we can expect more great laws like it to follow. Like parents should be required to affirm their child's belief that a monster is in the closet. For such occasions, installing a home security system would be advisable. How about calling in the SWAT team, or potentially opening fire with a shotgun into the closet? 
Any response less than this would not be affirming to the child and therefore would be putting the child's health, safety, and welfare at great risk. And as fate would have it, those who aren't very well indoctrinated into communism yet, and therefore still believe in God, often consider their relationship with their children to be the most sacred duty ever. And raising their children with great values and protecting their children's safety at all costs to be of utmost importance. So much so that good parents are even willing to sacrifice their own lives in order to keep their children safe and protected. And the government is messing with that. So we look forward to seeing how that works out. And as a parent, you might be saying, ah, this new law sounds insane, but it doesn't affect me. My child's not trans. But to that we say, not yet. Because if you have your children enrolled in the concentration camp known as public schools, you can rest assured that they're doing their absolute best to make sure your child becomes convinced that they're trans. Not because there's any kind of indoctrination going on in schools, it's because the schools are just helping children find their truth. And because schools are doing so well at helping children find their truth and actual gender identity lately, since 2007 we've seen a 15,000% increase in castration, sterilization, and mutilation clinics for children. Don't go to that playground, you might hit your head. Go on over to that clinic where you'll lose your genitals. Safety. That's it for tonight's news. Put your kids in public schools, and the sooner you can get your kids on hormones, puberty blockers, and surgeries, the sooner your kid becomes a lifelong customer. All it will cost you is your little kids and a lot of money, and if you don't think that's a good idea, then we'll just take your kids away from you and do it anyway, if you let this continue. Good night. Oh, uh, I didn't see you there. Hey, I'll tell you the bad news in a second, but first, here's the good news. There's not much that's more impactful on your health than infrared saunas. We're talking detoxification, we're talking boosted metabolism, we're talking increased heat shock proteins, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking stress reduction, better sleep, and improved skin. And one study shows that regular sauna use results in a 40% decreased all-cause mortality rate. It's good to not die. But here's the bad news. There tends to be a big barrier of entry with using infrared saunas because they're usually very expensive and if you do have one, they take up a lot of valuable space in your home and clutter things up. That is until now, thanks to the Bond Charge Infrared Sauna Blanket. It's the most cost-effective sauna system on the market, plus it's compact. It doesn't take up a bunch of space in your home. You just roll it out and use it when you want. And it's incredibly powerful, generating all the heat you would ever want. I love using the Bond Charge Infrared Sauna Blanket. It's been a major boost in my health practices. And thanks to Bond Charge, it's now easier and more affordable than ever to bring infrared sauna a use into your life. If you want to treat yourself to all the amazing benefits of infrared saunas, just go to bondcharge.com JP to get yours. And while you're there, be sure to use the discount code JP for 15% off. Enjoy.